Hello and welcome to a new episode of Mo Thoughts. Today we have a look at New Cycle. A lot of people are asking, what is it? And more importantly, is it any good? New Cycle is an early access game, which is coming out right now. And it is a survival city management game, even though it is focusing more on the city management aspect. Yes, there are some slight survival parts in the game, but it is not a frost punk. It isn't throwing tons and tons of bad decisions at you, and you have to slowly watch how your once amazing city is crumbling to dust. That is not happening here. It is actually the opposite, where you are starting to have uh, humanity coming back from the brink of annihilation and slowly lead them to former glory. Right, that's the premise of the game, so it's definitely focusing more on the city building and management aspect. And I like to compare it with Anno meets the Fallout universe, because it actually plays like the Anno games. That means we have a, a lot of workers who are living in a small hamlet and they are just happy to be there, right? They want some food, they want some water, and they want a roof over their head and they're happy with that. But later on, you will get more people. You will have people with um, different tiers, right? You can upgrade your workers to the next higher tier. And when you do that, well, they want more stuff. They want more luxuries and you have to provide them or people will get pissed and that spells disaster. So you don't want to do that. Again, very close to how the Anno series is functioning. And you are living in this post-apocalyptic world where you are starting out with barely anything. Your people barely know how to use wood and stone. And then later on, they learn how to harness metal, electricity, and you are moving into the industrial age. From the industrial age, you are even going slowly into the modern age. Like there is a lot of like research you can do in this game. And the research tree is pretty expensive expensive, uh, which is great, right? You want that in those type of games. And then you are building up your city. You have to take care of the needs of the people. But as you remember, I also mentioned some of the survival aspects which are in the game. And they are, again, a little bit lighter when it comes to how bad it is. Let me give you an example. I had once um, a survival event where I had to choose if I want to have pets in my city. And when I do that, well, I will increase the morale of the people. And the pets will also take care of vermin so that they don't have like some medical emergency at some point because they're killing all the vermin, right? And but the downside of all of this is that unfortunately I need 20% more food on every single day. So if you cannot really produce that amount of food, then you shouldn't do that. And if you're deciding not to take in the pets, you are getting some um, minus of morale, you have a higher chance of getting a medical emergency through the vermins running vile, wild, and so on and so forth, right? So you have to make some decisions, but it's not all bad. You pick your poison and there might be some good stuff coming with it, but there also might be a few things you have to look out for. Another thing I really, really want to point out in this game, which they're really doing, um, they're doing really well, is the interface. The interface in this game is so snappy. It is like giving you tons of information on what the hell is going on. It feels really good. Like those type of games rise and fall with the interface, with the UI, right? And this game has just nailed it. And as I said, when you were clicking like on um, the information you need, like how many resources you are producing, where the resources coming from, where do you utilize the resources? Are they being used on a daily basis by your people? Are you just using them to build buildings? Something like that, right? You can exactly follow the resource and you know exactly what is happening in your city. So you never can argue that, oh man, we did run out of food. I didn't saw that coming. No, you will see it coming and you just decided not to act on it. So again, they're doing a fantastic job on that. Love it. Now you might ask, okay, this sounds all pretty great. Are there any downsides to this game? Yes, there are. But the really interesting part here is the downsides I've been seeing so far is not bugs, 
I think I had one single bug, which wasn't even important. It was like some graphical glitch I had for like two seconds, so it didn't really matter. Um, but the really problem this game has is a bit of balance fine-tuning. Yes, that's the point we at. My biggest complaints will be some balance issues, which, let's be honest here, that's great because that's easily fixable, right? So let me tell you about two of the balance issues which are also connected and which have been my biggest gripe right now. But again, that's fixable, right? So first, let's talk about production. Production in this game takes a lot, which makes sense. It's like Anno, right? You have to build multiple buildings of the same type to really get the production running and have enough resources for the people living in your city. But I still believe it's not enough what the buildings are producing. Too often you are not producing enough, even if you are changing like um, how much work people have to put in and how high the morale is and all that. Like I'm at the maximum of morale all the time and I have decent work hours they have to put in, but I still feel sometimes I'm not producing enough resources. So I have to build more and more resource buildings. The problem is, and this leads us to the second gripe I have with the game, you need more people for that. And people do not grow on trees, especially at the beginning, they're coming in random, or you have to wait till your people became adults. And you never really know when that happens. Like, I think it takes about like four years before kids become adults, but it also is happening in batches. So that means you had a year where you got 20 kids and then four years down the line, they become adults and out of nowhere, you have 20 more adults you have to take care of, right? And they need food, they need shelter, they need clothes and so on and so forth. And you basically already use a huge batch of the people you just get just to fill up the gaps of the production line you had before. And you're not really focusing on the new buildings you wanted to build, you just researched. And again, it... <sighs> It's not really a stable growth. It's like growth spurts you were getting with people. And it, it makes the whole the whole game sometimes give you a lot of downtimes where you can't do absolutely nothing because you were missing the people for it. And then you have times again where you are panicking because you have to take care of so many extra people. And it doesn't feel right yet. But as I said, those are my biggest gripes and they are fixable right? They are balance patches. So I'm looking forward to that. But beyond that, if you are looking for an Anno game set in a post-apocalyptic world, I think New Cycle is exactly the game you're looking for. And it already feels great in early access. With that said, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more strategy games here on the channel as well. And thank you so much for watching. I see you next time. Stay safe. Bye-bye.